Hey guys, alright? Welcome everyone. The story begins with a car on a remote road with six young friends when suddenly the tire bursts and they almost overturn. The car shakes violently at high speed and one of the girls injures her head. This group of friends consists of three women and three men. The woman in pink is named Sarah, the one in the green jacket is Karen, and the one who hit her head is Jody. The guys are Jeff, wearing a blue shirt, Todd, in a gray shirt, and their friend Eric, in a white shirt. They are all headed to Jody's sister's birthday celebration in a remote town that day. The road they are on is so isolated that only a few cars pass by in a month. So, when the tire bursts, they stop to change it, which is all normal until now. Todd, as the car owner, takes the lead to change the flat tire with the spare one. Sarah takes advantage of the situation and takes some selfies to post on her social media status. However, due to the remote location, getting a proper signal is quite challenging. Jody and Karen hide in the shadow behind the car for a few minutes because the weather is getting too hot. Eric, on the other hand, needs to urinate, so he goes straight into the bushes to do so. Todd, not very successful in changing the tire, asks Jeff to do it for him. After removing the flat tire and while putting on the spare one, Jeff notices that the tire is slightly deflating and catches it before it rolls away. But to his surprise, he sees a bullet falling out of the tire. Meanwhile, behind the car in the shade, their friends are chatting, and Eric is returning to them. However, Todd and the girls hear the sound of a tool dropping and notice one of the tires rolling down the road. Todd quickly runs to catch it. At the same time, Sarah goes to check if Jeff has managed to change the tire. But she is immediately shocked when she sees that he is horribly dead beside the car. Horrified, she is left speechless. When Todd returns with the tire, he still hasn't noticed that something is wrong. As he gets closer, he sees that Sarah is bleeding and one of her eyes is destroyed. Karen and Jody see this too and are shocked and confused about what is happening. Suddenly, Sarah gets hit by a bullet and dies on the spot, making it clear that they are under attack by a shooter. From this point on, Karen, realizing the situation and not knowing where the bullets are coming from, quickly yells for her friends to hide somewhere. Without much thought, they run behind the car for cover. Todd, still in shock from the terrible scene of his girlfriend dying, can barely run in time and gets shot in the left shoulder. Meanwhile, Eric doesn't have time to reach the car and has to hide behind a tree trunk. They are being shot at continuously and have to take cover wherever they can. It becomes evident that the flat tire was caused by this shooter. Some time later, they analyze the situation and try to figure out a way to get out of there. Karen, who is the daughter of a military man, mentions that the shooter used a silencer to keep his shot silent and removed it afterward to try to make the bullets go through the car, indicating that his position was far away. Todd, having been shot in the shoulder, has difficulties moving properly, and Eric can only stay behind a tree trunk, hoping for a miracle. At one point, Karen says that about three meters behind the car, she still managed to get a signal on her cell phone. So, Todd tries to extend his hand with the cell phone, but immediately Jody hands him a selfie stick to use. Before that, Karen had also set up Google Assistant to call 911 immediately once there is a signal. Without hesitation, Todd extends the cell phone with the selfie stick and manages to get a signal. Unfortunately, just as Karen shouted to call 911, the cell phone is shot and destroyed by the psychotic shooter. As a second attempt, Todd plans to put the car in neutral so they can push it backward to a position with a signal. They form a plan where Jody stands in front with her cell phone recording a video to later trace the origin of the shots, while Karen stands in the back holding an improvised scarecrow to attract the attention of the shooter. As soon as the scarecrow is hit, Todd gets into the car and, with great effort, manages to put the key in the ignition. However, due to the continuous shots, he needs to take cover first and doesn't have time to shift to neutral. At least Jody manages to trace the source of the shots, and they discover that the shooter is hiding in a tree about 100 meters away from them. Todd comes up with an idea to try to put the car in neutral again. He sees his toolbox at the back of the car and tries his luck. He runs to grab it successfully. 
His plan is to use the toolbox as protection and enter the car long enough to put it in neutral. He improvises hand protection and asks Karen and Jody to get into position to push the car backward. However, they could have placed wedges on the tires to prevent it from rolling forward, which would have been the obvious outcome. Todd enters quickly and manages to put the car in neutral, but unfortunately, in the process, he is shot in the hand as predicted, and the car immediately starts rolling downhill. Karen and Jody can't do much, but they still manage to hold and move it back a bit. However, Jody becomes a little exposed while trying to support and push the car. She gets scared by a shot that almost hits her, causing her to leave her position, leaving Karen alone to hold the car, which she can't do, obviously. Jody then attempts to return to her position but fails again and ends up in a worse situation where she is completely exposed to the shooter, who, however, does not kill her and only shoots the ground to scare her and prevent her from returning to the car. In this situation, Karen also loses her balance and falls, leaving Todd alone trying to hold the car. Suddenly, the tire that hadn't been screwed on properly comes off, and the car stops. At that moment, Karen realizes that it is the right moment for Jody to escape and return behind the car because the shooter seems to be reloading his bullets. At the same time, Eric tries to escape from his position but gets shot in the leg, making him unable to walk. Under such conditions, Eric should have been shot to death, but the shooter deliberately leaves him alive to bleed to death. Some time later, Todd notices a water bottle on the car seat. They grab it and try to share it among themselves, as they are very thirsty. Karen throws the bottle for Eric to drink, but as he goes to drink, he gets shot in the hand and screams in pain, while the psychopath calmly eats and drinks. At one point, Jody urinates right there near Karen and Todd, and devastated, Todd observes that his girlfriend's body is being eaten by crows and throws stones to scare them away. Meanwhile, the girls, already without hope of survival, sing the happy birthday song for Jody's sister, for whom they were going to a surprise party that day. After that, Todd, also without hope of survival, walks to where his girlfriend's body is and strangely, the shooter doesn't shoot at him. In fact, Todd still has time to cover the part of her face that was destroyed by the bullet and kisses her forehead. Meanwhile, Eric, who is already almost dead, sees a wolf approaching him. With no strength left, he surrenders to be devoured by the animal. However, at that moment, Todd, who is challenging the shooter to kill him already, accidentally sees a car passing in the distance. He starts shouting to be seen by the driver, but unfortunately, he gets shot at that moment and dies next to his girlfriend. The wolf flees, leaving Eric alive. Then, at that instant, the car driver sees Karen and Jody still in the distance and realizes that something is wrong. She, who is accompanied by a girl in the back seat and her father in the front, wakes him up to show him what's happening. However, her hand is shot, severing her fingers. She loses control of the car, and it flips over in the middle of the road, throwing the girl out of the back seat. With that, Karen and Jody's only hope vanished in an instant. The woman driving the car gets up and tries to go to where her sister was on the other side of the road. Karen and Jody try to warn her about the shooter, but it's in vain, and she continues trying to go in the direction where her sister was. As a consequence, she is shot several times by the shooter. Shortly after, their father gets up too and manages to carry his daughter behind the car. Karen and Jody also shout to him, telling him to stay hidden there as there is a shooter killing everyone. Karen then shouts for him to call 911 because apparently, his position is in an area with signal coverage, and he starts dialing. The shooter, however, unable to get a view of the man, starts shooting at the car's gas tank until it explodes. The man, on fire, goes to the middle of the road and dies there. His daughter, who was thrown out of the car, wakes up and calls for her father, but the psychotic killer shoots her and kills her too. From then on, things only get worse for them. Having lost their only hope so quickly, they don't know what to do to escape alive. When Karen finally has an idea, they decide to act once it gets dark. She explains that the shooter's visibility would be more difficult at night, especially with smoke. Karen plans something and waits for the right time. As night falls, the wicked shooter continues to monitor the area and doesn't miss a single movement. Then, armed with a utility knife, the two of them start cutting the rear seat of the car. 
Jody also finds a bottle of gasoline, a bag with clothes, and a box of beverages that still had water in the trunk. After that, they take some t-shirts and use them as masks to avoid inhaling too much smoke. Without delay, Jody pours the gasoline on the seat, and Karen sets it on fire. The car starts to ignite and release a lot of smoke, but it's still not enough to give them a chance to escape. At this point, the psychotic shooter starts getting irritated because his visibility is getting worse, so he starts randomly shooting at the car. Suddenly, Karen sees a police car approaching, indicating that the 911 call her father made earlier worked, and the police were able to successfully track it. The police officers bring two snipers with them and, seeing the precarious situation, request backup through the radio, informing that there's a shooter in an elevated position. However, the police officer is having problems with the radio, which isn't getting any communication signal. He then tries to use his cell phone, but when they manage to get through, the shooter shoots the officer directly in the mouth, tearing off his mandible. And the worst happens when, with the weight of his leg, he presses the accelerator, causing the car to lunge forward, unbalancing the officers who were behind with rifles, one of whom falls on the road and is killed instantly by a precise shot. At that moment, Karen shouts to Jody, saying that it's the right time to run, but Jody refuses due to being paralyzed with fear. Then Karen panics and goes alone, but unfortunately, the smoke wasn't enough, and she reaches a part where there is no more smoke, leaving her exposed and consequently in the shooter's line of sight. Seeing her, the shooter hits her with a shot to the head. At that moment, the police officer manages to stop the out-of-control police car, and Jody runs to them. A shootout begins, but they can't hit a single shot on the psychopathic shooter. On the contrary, the police shooter is hit and dies. The last officer, now furious and not thinking clearly, grabs the rifle of the fallen officer and tries to go after the psychopathic shooter, but he does it in a completely wrong way and becomes exposed, ultimately getting killed as well. With all hope seemingly gone, Jody takes one last action. She gets in the police car and accelerates towards the tree where the wicked shooter is, planning to crash into it and knock him down. Surprisingly, even though she is shot in the shoulder, Jody manages to do it and brings down the shooter from the tree. She gets out of the car, picks up his rifle from the ground, and the shooter tries to cut the rope that was holding him to the tree. When he frees himself, he takes off his mask and faces Jody, approaching her. Jody, after a lot of effort, manages to cock the rifle and shoots the psychopath several times until he falls to the ground. She tries to give him a final shot to finish him off, but the rifle jams and she can't unlock it anymore. She uses the rifle to hit him several times in the head. When she stops, she sees some scratches on the rifle's handle, indicating that each scratch represents one of the shooter's victims. Furious with this discovery, Jody hits him on the head once again. And here's a personal tip, if you don't want to get frustrated, consider ending the movie right here. Because as soon as she hits the shooter's head once more, the rifle unlocks and accidentally fires, killing her right there on the spot.